So you just bought the brand new Sapphire Radeon Pulse RX 7600 XT Gaming OC card. Awesome. But how do you get in the system like I do? Well, don't worry. In this video, I'm gonna show you from start to finish how to remove your old graphics card, drivers and all, then how to install your brand new card, how to install the drivers, and how to tweak and tune it. That way you can get to gaming as soon as possible. Before we get started installing it, let's do a quick unboxing so we can find out what's inside. Don't worry, you can skip ahead if you'd like. So here we have again, the Sapphire Radeon Pulse RX 7600 XT 16 gig. You can see that right up here. The 16 gig, overclocked. Along here, we can see the UBC serial number, part number, and all that good stuff. Along the back, product specifications, system specification, and then some of the RDNA 3 architecture over here. Over here, some of the key features and just some marketing along with the bottom and the top. So let's go ahead, open it up. Then the usual quick installation guide, but don't worry about that. We're going to go over it in this video here. And I'm gonna put this aside just for right now, just to see if there was anything else in the box, but nothing else, no adapters anymore. And I already peeled off all of this over here and I'll remove these. This has two HDMI's and two display ports, along with a vent right over here to expel some of that heat from the rear of the card. Looks like a little bit of that over here as well. So you can see that does stick out a little tiny bit. See these two ball bearing fans. Let's measure those real quick. Ninety-three millimeters, ninety-three point thirteen, give or take a tiny bit. All right, so 93 millimeter fans. And then alongside over here, we'd see the sapphire with their gradient, along with the fins, the heat pipes, and then over here, the two eight pin PCIe connections. And yes, both of those do need to be connected. The card does require a 600 watt power supply. Now mind you, not for the card itself, but for the entire system. See along here, kind of closed up, but we can see the ending of the heat pipes and a little bit inside the card. Then along the back with their nice Pulse logo, then Radeon opening on the rear of the card to expel some of that heat from the top side of the system, which usually have fans sucking air out. Then Sapphire Pulse logo right over here, along with this. So the metal back plate looks really nice. And the card itself measures 10 inches. I'll go ahead and convert it down below. And then it is about four and a half inches wide and almost two inches deep, 1.8 inches deep. All right, so let's get this in the system real quick. Before we can actually get that card in, we need to remove this card and we're going to remove the drivers first. So to start off with, we'll open up a browser and we'll go to wagnardsoft.com. Scroll down a little tiny bit, go to the latest display driver uninstaller version, click here, and then scroll down a little tiny bit until we see Click here for download and support. So click here, a little tiny bit more down and then click on the display driver uninstaller released and then the portable self extracting or the DDU installer, whichever one of the two. So we'll click here, we'll download that. While that's downloading, which it's already done, but anyway, we'll go to amd.com on a different tab. We'll go to resources and support. Then we'll go to drivers, scroll down a tiny bit. We'll select graphics. Then we'll select AMD Radeon RX 7000 series and then AMD Radeon RX 7600 series. And finally, AMD Radeon RX 7600 XT and then click submit. And then we'll select our version of Windows. I'm using Windows 11 64 bit. So we'll click here and then we'll click the AMD software adrenaline edition. The latest version is always recommended. So we'll click download. Okay, that'll take a little bit as well. In the meantime, we'll go to our downloads folder. So we'll go into File Explorer and wherever we downloaded that to, we'll double click on DDU and we'll extract it. I'll go ahead and extract it to the DDU folder on the root of the C drive and then click extract. 
and I'll close out of there. And that's already done downloading for me over here. So now that we've downloaded DDU and the drivers for the 7600 XT, we're going to boot into safe mode. In safe mode, Windows doesn't have a hold of all of the drivers. They're not in use. So that makes it easier to uninstall drivers. Every driver has an uninstaller, but those are kind of sloppy. The reason being they're in Windows. Windows is using everything it needs from those drivers, so it can't really get rid of them like it needs to. It can do that in safe mode. So let's keep going. So then here in Windows, we'll go ahead and hold the left shift key, right click on the start button, hover over shutdown or sign out, and then we'll click restart while still holding on to the left shift key. So after our restart, now we can let go of the left shift key. We'll go to troubleshoot. Then we'll go to advanced options. Then we'll go to startup settings. Restart to change windows options such as, we're going to need to use enable safe mode. So we'll click restart here. When that restarts, we can either select number four, which is enable safe mode, number five, which is enable safe mode with networking, or number six, enable safe mode with command prompt. We're gonna go ahead and use option number four, enable safe mode. So we'll hit number four on the keyboard. So now we're in Windows. We'll go ahead and click on File Explorer. We'll go to the C drive or wherever we extracted the DDU folder to. Then we'll go to the latest version. I've done this once before on this machine. So we'll select 18.7.2. You might have a newer version. And then we'll click Display Driver Uninstaller. Okay, if it's your first time, you'll get this message. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And I'm minimizing this a little tiny bit so we can actually use it. Inside of my system, I have an AMD CPU, which also means I have an AMD chipset. That's incredibly important because of over here. If you have an AMD chipset, you're going to want to remove all of these. Unchecking all of that removes the potential for the software to remove your chipset drivers. Now, it's not a tremendous deal. You can just reinstall that, but this is just to be a little cautious. So again, if we have an AMD CPU, we'll remove all of this here. And this part, even if we don't, it's not a bad thing to just place a check under everything NVIDIA. It's not going to mess up anything, no matter what chipset or graphics card you have. But in this case, we do have an NVIDIA graphics card, so we're getting rid of that here. Scroll down a tiny bit, it's okay to leave this no matter what processor you have. Now this one's incredibly important. This doesn't always have a check on it, but if it doesn't, put a check in it like I have now. Prevent downloads of drivers from Windows Update when Windows search for a driver for a device. If we leave that unchecked, when we run DDU, then boot back into Windows, Windows will do its normal update thing and then see, hey, wait a minute, you don't have graphics drivers. We need them. Let me go ahead and download them and ruin your entire system with old drivers. Old drivers. Take note of that. If it does and it works, cool, but they're old drivers. Doing this, what it does is it stops Windows from looking from drivers. We don't want it to download drivers for us. We want to take care of that so we can have an optimal system. With that check there, we'll go ahead and click close. Then over here, we'll click select device type. We'll select GPU. And then below GPU, we'll have the option for NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel. If your old graphics card that you're removing now is an NVIDIA card, you'll select NVIDIA. If it's AMD, you'll select AMD. And if it's Intel, you'll select Intel. This also includes your on-die CPU graphics, the graphics coming from your CPU if you don't have a graphics card that's still using drivers. So we'll want to remove those. But since we have NVIDIA, we'll go ahead and select NVIDIA, and then we'll select clean and shut down. We select clean and shut down because it cleans and wipes all the drivers, then shuts down, which gets ready for us to go ahead, remove the old graphics card, and then install the new graphics card. It's incredibly important that you pay attention to how I remove the old graphics card. If not, you could ruin the PCIe slot. So let's keep going. This only takes about a minute or so. And now to play it safe, we'll just go ahead and disconnect all of the cables. Now, before we actually touch the card or anything inside of the system, make sure to ground yourself by touching the metal parts of the case, the outside of the case. That way you ground yourself. You get rid of any ESD in your hands on the case itself so that it's safe to touch the card because you're not going to zap it. If you get up at any point during this upgrade, make sure you sit down and touch everything again because you're going to build up ESD all over again. And before you touch that new card, again, touch the case, and then you're safe to touch the card. Now, to get started, we'll remove the PCIe cable. 
Holding the PCIe cable in place is a retention mechanism either at the top or at the very bottom of the card. This particular card has it along the bottom. So we'll see a little clip right down here. We'll go ahead and use our thumb or a finger to press this, which will release back here and then just pull it out. Okay, so right there, we've removed the eight pin PCIe connection. This is actually a six plus two pin PCIe connection. For the next card, we'll need two of these and we'll go over that in a minute. So now that we've removed the PCIe connection, let's go ahead and remove the screws holding the card in place. Every case has it a little bit different. After removing that cover, it'll expose the two screws right over here. Now, many motherboards have different types of retention mechanisms. This particular one I've seen is the most common. There's a little black lever right over here, holding the card right in place, locking it in the PCIe slot. In order to be able to remove the card, you might wanna hold onto the card just in case, and then we'll go ahead and push that in. Pushing that in releases the card so that we can easily remove the card. Once we push a card back into the slot, you'll notice that little mechanism pops right back up. Okay, it's teeny tiny, so you may not have noticed, but disconnect it again. Now we're going to slide these gold fingers right into the slot over here, but take note of these two metal pieces right over here. They're going to slide in between the motherboard and the case right over here. Many times when you install a card, you'll slide it in this way, that sometimes when you're sliding this in, these two metal pieces stick out of here and don't allow you to properly insert the card. So we'll just slide it right in here. and we've just inserted the graphics card. And now the same way we removed the screws, we'll go ahead, and line up these screws over here. You may need to raise the card a little tiny bit. And now we'll grab that eight pin PCIe and the little clip on this card is right along the top. So you can see a little bit better on how that works. We'll push those pins right in there. And then this will lock right in place. So you heard a little teeny tiny click. We still need to install the second one. Now this PCIe cable comes from the power supply. This power supply happens to have a second PCIe connection. So we'll go ahead and plug that one in up here as well, same way. And this also has a six plus two connection but you can use a by eight, just make sure it's a PCIe by eight, not an EPS, EPS is for your CPU. Okay, and then we'll just push that right in place and click it in place. Again, these PCIe cables come from your power supply. And now we'll go ahead and reconnect all of the cables. Depending on your system, you may have previously connected your monitor right over here. It's not going to work there anymore. You have to make sure you plug it into your graphics card. Now let's turn her on real quick. All right, beautiful. Everything started up perfectly fine. So now we'll go into File Explorer and we'll navigate to where we downloaded the AMD drivers. For me, it's in the downloads and we'll double click on it. And if you want to change it other than where this says here, you'll select that here. You want to do a full install, minimum or driver only. I'd like to do a full install and then click install. And then we'll go ahead and uncheck here and uncheck here and we'll click finish and I'll close out of here. So I've been using a capture card to record all of this. Now that everything's good here, I'll go ahead and right click on the background and I'll select AMD Software Adrenaline Edition. And I'll go ahead and skip this. So the Adrenaline software is awesome software. It allows you to get so much more out of your card. So you can change your global experience, select quality, HyperRX Eco, AAA Smart Technology, HyperRX, which I'll use that in a later video. And back to quality, we'll select 
capture, you can take a screenshot, record a video, instant GIF. I like to say GIF, but it's GIF. Instant replay, and then the games we've played. So it gives us defaults that we can select for it. We can browse for the games here. The current version, if it's up to date or not, check for updates, AMD Assist. Under gaming, that's where we can select everything for those games I was talking about earlier. Graphics, we can select all of those presets I mentioned earlier and a ton more. This is definitely good stuff right over here under display. AMD FreeSync, not supported because I'm using a capture card. Let me fix that, one sec. Now I've switched over to recording from the software itself. So then we'll come back over here to gaming. Now we can utilize super resolution, fluid motion frames, awesome technology, which we'll go over a little bit later in a different video under display. Now we can enable FreeSync Premium Pro, definitely something that's incredibly important to have. Gives you so much more performance. Record and stream. I'll skip this because we are already recording. You can see that right over here. And then live streaming if we were, but we're not streaming right now. Scene editor, media, settings, performance, overlay over here. Definitely something good to have right over here. And tuning for overclocking and everything right from here. And settings, and then smart technology. This one's a little bit new we have a host of features. So now that we've got that installed, just one more thing we need to do, we'll minimize this. Now, since we're not using the capture card anymore, we'll right click on the background, we'll click on display settings, and then we'll come down to advanced display. And right over here, choose a refresh rate. Because we were on the capture card and default in Windows, it wants us to be at 59 or 60. You want to be as high as possible, as high as your monitor allows. Right now for me, it's 120 Hertz for this particular monitor. So I'll select that, keep changes. And with all that, we've 100% installed and are ready to game on the Sapphire Radeon Pulse RX 7600 XT Gaming OC graphics card. Not like the previous one. The previous one only had eight gigs of RAM. This one has 16 and is actually clocked higher, so it gets a little bit better performance than its little brother. So that was just a preview of the gaming performance of the Sapphire Radeon Pulse RX 7600 XT Gaming OC card. Coming up next, the full review and some gameplay performance on the card as well. Now, if you are worried about cooling, make sure to check out this video. I'm gonna teach you from top to bottom how to connect everything so you get the proper airflow. Iggy with this bites for you up. See you guys.